J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Waukegan, Illinois, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Man About Town from the picture of the same name. The other day, walking along the street, I stopped to look in the windows of a grocery store, and I was thinking how attractive the cool, fresh fruit looked piled up in heaps. Well, you know, one of the best ways to serve fresh fruits is to combine them with Jell-O. Jell-O is delicious, served with fresh strawberries, with circles of orange, or with sliced bananas. And it makes an ideal hot weather dessert, cool, inviting, and satisfying. For Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich flavor. The flavor is appetizing and refreshing as the fresh, ripe fruit itself. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. All six flavors are extra rich, and all six colors are extra gay in summary. Just be sure of one thing. Be sure to get genuine Jell-O when you buy and don't accept any substitutes. Look up any substitutes. Look up any substitutes. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. And now, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Waukegan. Our last broadcast of the season is coming to you from the stage of the Genesee Theater in Waukegan, Illinois. Yes, sir. Jello again, folks. Please, Jack, wait till I introduce you. Oh, pardon me, I'm nervous. On a certain Valentine's Day many years ago, a stork flew over this fair city and dropped a little bundle of joy. <laughs> and who do you think this bundle was? Uh, Jello again. This Jack, ja will you please wait a minute? Don, who was born here, you or me? <laughs> For heaven's sake. So without further ado, I bring you that local boy who surprised everybody by making good, Jack Benny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hello again. This is Bundle Benny talking. <laughs> And it's about time. Gosh, Don, I've been so thrilled and excited the last few days that, well, really, I don't know where I'm at or what I'm doing. Well, I Woo! can certainly appreciate that. <laughs> you look it. <laughs> well, you know, Don, I spent the last four days just renewing old acquaintances and visiting all my old hangouts. What a time I've been having. Well, who'd you see, Jack? Oh, everybody. Ollie Imerman, Stubb Wilbur, Cliff Gordon. And yesterday, I dropped into Bobby O'Farrell's pool room. I haven't seen Bobby in 15 years. Hey, I'll bet he was thrilled to death. Was he? Why, the minute I walked in, he said to me, Jack, will you ever forget the day you were showing off and you ripped a hole in the cloth on the billiard table? <laughs> I said, I sure do, Bob. And he said, that'll be $3. Oh. <laughs> oh, he was just tickled to death. <laughs> and how? Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, did you see that pal of yours that you're always talking about... Uh... Oh, you know, the fellow that runs the clothing store. Oh, you mean Julius, Julius Senekin. That's the fellow. Was he glad to see you? Glad to see me. Don, when I walked into a store, there were tears in his eyes as he jumped over the counter, threw his arms around me and said, Yes, sir, what can I do for you? <laughs> Before I got out of there, I had three Palm Beach suits and a raccoon coat. <laughs> he must have been kidding, you know. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. How's the Waukegan kid? Oh, I'm swell, Phil. Have you been having a good time? I'll say, but you know what happened last night, Jack? No, what? Well, a bunch of us fellas were sitting up in my hotel room, just huh? sitting in my room, and yeah. we were singing and laughing and making a lot of noise, and the first thing you know, a couple of cops came up and took us to the Who's Gal. Took you to the Who's Gal? Wait a minute, Phil. You mean to say they put you in jail? Those weren't candy bars I was looking through. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, why didn't you call me? I'd have had the mayor, Bitey Talcott, fix it up. He could have taken care of that. He could, eh? He was with us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I should have warned him about you. So you and the mayor have been palling around together, eh? Yeah, he thinks I'm a riot. Yeah. 
Listen, Phil, I know Bidey Talk out pretty well. He isn't going to fall for that corny chatter of yours. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. How are you, Jack? <laughs> well, Mary, here we are in my hometown. Are you enjoying yourself? Am I? Gee, everybody's been so wonderful to me. I've been out sightseeing every day. Hey, you don't have to get nervous. This is my hometown. <laughs> Well, Mary, there's plenty to see here, too. Huh? You know, Jack, I even saw the house you were born in. No kidding. It's a fish market now. <laughs> a fish market? Well, of all things. But they haven't forgotten you, Jack. They haven't, eh? No, they got a big sign there that says, Jack Benny born here. Fresh mackerel daily. <laughs> Well, naturally, they have to advertise what they're selling. What else did you do, Mary? Well, I went over to the City Hall Park to see that elm tree they planted in your honor. Oh, yes. You see that elm tree? I'll say. <laughs> what are you laughing at? There was a squirrel in it signing autographs. <laughs> that was my uncle, Tarzan Benny. <laughs> But say, fellas, you ever notice uh, what a, for a town this size how many pretty girls there are here? You're right, Jack. The girls are beautiful. How'd they go for me? Oh, sure. Why, they're always staring at me. Well, Phil, Marcel's hair for men is a novelty around here. <laughs> you know, so uh, stop taking bows. Say, Jack, uh, you told me that you used to be quite a ladies' man in this town. Have you seen any of your old girlfriends? Have I? Why, Don, only this morning I was walking down Washington Street... And who did I run into but Vivian Thompson? You know, when we were kids, she and I were kind of stuck on each other. You know, I used to write her notes, and we used to give each other presents. In fact, I still have a lock of her hair. You ought to paste it on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. Vivian and I had quite a romance. Was she thrilled seeing you again? Well done. She, uh... Did she kiss you? I didn't put this lipstick on my forehead myself. <laughs> You know, to tell you the truth, I think she's still crazy about me. Well, if she's so crazy about you, why did she kiss you on the forehead? <laughs> because she's taller than I am. <laughs> That's why. What do you want me to do, carry a box to stand on? <laughs> anyway, let's not get into an argument here. I'm feeling too good. Me too. And I'm so grateful the way people here have treated me that I wrote a poem all about Waukegan. Well, that's a fine way to pay him back. <laughs> now, go ahead. Let's hear it. Well, Jack, I'm going out in the hall for a glass of water. I'm going with you, and I never touch it. Come back here, both of you. <laughs> if I can take it, you can. Now, go ahead with your poem, Mary. What's, uh, what's the title of it? Uh, to Waukegan, where Jack Benny was born in the year Never 18... mind, never mind. Read the poem. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. Oh, Waukegan, oh, Waukegan, on the shores of Lake Michigan. Michigan? Jack was born here in this place. He was very pretty, except his face. I was pretty all over. Well, go ahead. Once you were a little village, Indians roamed here to and fro. But now you are a great big city, and you gotta buy beads in the ten-cent store. Ten cents stole. Sure enough, honey. Well, we certainly got to Alabama fast. And... <laughs> Continue. Oh. <laughs> Continue, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I like your parks. I like your streets. I like your homes. They are so neat. I like your lake. I like your boats. Your sailors really know no, their oats. Old. <laughs> So, silly. oh, Waukegan, oh, Waukegan, we'll be sad when we are leaving. But before I go, this kiss I give to one and all from Mary Liv, the end. Well, it's about mm -hmm. time. <laughs> now, Mary, that was simply wonderful. Oh, Phil, do you think you can follow that with a number? Sure, Jack, I'll follow anything. I know, I've seen you on the street. <laughs> Now, go ahead. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Oh, Waukegan, here am I. Did I walk or did I fly? Is this just a dream per chance? Oh, gee whiz, I forgot my pants. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, I'm going to shoot him during the quail season, folks. Play, <laughs> Phil. <laughs>
that was Rose of Washington Square, played by Phil Harrison as orchestra. And I'm not saying this because it's our last program of the season, Phil, but on the level, that number was really swell. Thanks, Jack. Now, if your boys played like that every week, I'd be proud that I was a member of the Musicians' Union. <laughs> I thought they threw you out. They did not. I'll show you my membership card. I got it right here in my wallet. Oh, don't take off the barbed wire just for that. <laughs> That's a fine way to talk, Mary, after the way I've been spending money on you. I took you to Nolan's restaurant every single night this week for dinner. Yes, and I know why we always went to Nolan's. Never mind. Why, Mary? Fifteen years ago, Jack bought a meal ticket there, and he had eight punches left. <laughs> well, I can't carry it around with me forever. I'd like to take one of those punches and give it right to you, right in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, isn't that Smart on the last program. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a special announcement to make this evening. As you all know, tonight, immediately after our broadcast, we are having the world premiere of Paramount's new picture, Man About Town. And there are a lot of Hollywood celebrities here in our audience. There's Mark Sandridge, the director, Dorothy Lamour, Hedda Hopper, <laughs> myself, Phil Harris. <laughs> yes, we know you're here, Phil. And incidentally, when your face appears on the screen, just applaud. Don't stamp and whistle. <laughs> you know, you're not the only one in the picture. I'm the only one with sex appeal. Well, if that isn't the hammiest remark <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> Listen, brother, I got more appeal than you any day, and I'll leave it to Mary. You better not. <laughs> well, then you'll just have to take my word for it, Phil. Now, let's see, where were we? Oh, yes, in addition to our Hollywood celebrities, we also have with us several distinguished guests from Waukegan. And I'd like to present to you now an old school chum of mine who, through hard work and diligent perseverance, has gone far in the field of politics. Here he is, folks, the Honorable Mansell Bidey Talcott, Mayor of Waukegan. Hello, Bidey. Welcome to the Jell-O program. Hiya, Jackson. Are you in the groove? <laughs> what? What's that? Are you jiving, kid? <laughs> oh, you've been around with Harris, all right. Well, anyway, Bidey, it's sure good to see you again, and you're certainly looking fine. How do you feel? Swell, Jack. I'm right on the boom. That's on the beam. <laughs> On the beam, Bidey. Well, this stuff is new to me. Oh. It's new to everybody but Phil. Say, Mayor, why don't you give out with a couple of those gags I told you? Okay, Twitch. It's a fine mayor. I couldn't even be alderman in this town. <laughs> Let's see, where am I? Huh? Oh, here. Now, wait a minute, Bidey. I'm afraid we haven't time for any of Phil's gags, but I do want to tell you how much I appreciate your coming up here tonight to take a bow. And for the hospitality you've shown the gang and myself all week. I'll never forget it. You're welcome, Jack. And believe me, that goes for the whole town. See you later. Okay, Bidey. Oh, just a minute, Your Honor. Uh, before you leave, I'd like to ask you just one question. What is it, Don? Do the people in Waukegan eat a lot of Jell-O? Oh, just oodles of it. <laughs> oodles? And why do all these charming people in Waukegan eat Jell-O? Well, because... Because it's economical, easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors. That's right, buddy. And uh, what are those flavors, Your Honor? Well, there's... Uh... Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, yes, thanks, Bidey. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Bidey, the plug is quicker than the eye, so be careful. Well, so long, Bidey. So long, Jack. Well, Phil, see you later. And we'll go out and cut a rug. Okay, man. <laughs> He sure is a nice guy. He gave me nine keys to the city already. He carries them around like lifesavers. 
And now, folks, as Kenny Baker, our young tenor, was called back to Hollywood, uh, he will not be with us tonight. So for the vocal highlight of the evening, Mr. Phil Harris, the Nightingale of the South, and Miss Mary Livingston, the Plainfield Thrush, <laughs> will blend their voices in a popular little number called... Uh, that must be Bidey again. Is that you, Mayor? It sure is, Buck. Open up. Well, the mayor of Van Nuys. <laughs> Fellas? Well, Andy, I thought you'd never get here. What delayed you? Well, I couldn't find the theater. Why, anybody could have told you where the Genesee Theater is. All you had to do was ask them. Well, I ask a lot of people, Buck, but every time I open my mouth, they just looked in. <laughs> well, your tonsils are intriguing. Uh, you know, Andy, uh, you should have been here a few minutes ago. You being the mayor of Van Nuys, I could have introduced you to the mayor of Waukegan. Oh, I know, buddy. I was over at the city hall with him all morning. Yeah, what were you doing? Oh, we just sat around and hammered with our gavels. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I'll bet that was a lot of fun. Hey, Andy, have you been down to Chicago yet? There's a town you ought to see. Chicago? Where's that? Oh, Andy, you know, it's that big city with the tall buildings. You know where we change trains. Is that Chicago? Certainly. Well, doggone, Bitey told me that was South Waukegan. <laughs> well, he would. You better be careful, Andy. The first thing you know, he'll try and sell it to you. It's too late now, Buck. I bought it. Well, you got a marvelous buy. Well, Andy, now that you're here, stick around because uh, Mary and Phil are going to sing a duet. You might as well hear it. No, I guess I'll go back to the hotel. I like to ride up and down in the elevator. Them things fascinate me. So long, boss. So long, Andy. You know, folks, Andy's getting a terrific kick out of this trip. He's never been east before. He's never even been in a hotel before. How do you know, Phil? I walked in his room this morning, and he was making the bed. <laughs> oh, he'll get by all right. Well, how about that number, kids? Are you ready? I am. Me too. Then swing it. And be good now. I want, them, I want to be proud of you tonight. <laughs> That waiting I hate It means the ladies in love With you And when my friends Ask me over to join their table But I Pick that far away booth for two Well sir Here's just how it stands I got romance on my hands Because the ladies in love With you if I go deaf, dumb, and blind And you got things on your mind You'll know the ladies in love with you If I had met your old flame And you remember their name It means the ladies in love with you And Sunday night when I take you to see that movie And I say the balcony seat will do well, sir, here's just how it stands. I got romance on my hands because, because the ladies in love with me. That was the ladies in love sung by Kenny Baker and very good Kenny. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, wait a minute. Phil and I sang that number. Oh, yes. I'm so nervous. Mary, do I know what I'm doing today? No. Oh. 
<laughs> that no wasn't in the script, folks. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, in a few more minutes, our little gang will bid you all adieu until next October. Say, Don. Oh, yes, Jack. Just imagine we'll all have 14 whole weeks of rest. 14 weeks of nice, carefree relaxation. And 14 weeks without getting paid. Yipe! <laughs> Oh, I never thought of that. Say, Jack, I'm getting a little bit jumpy, are you? You mean on account of the premiere of the picture? No, Phil, I'm sure it'll go over big. Why, look at all my friends sitting out in the audience. Sid Block, Ward, Just, Mr. and Mrs. Pritchard, and there's my dad and sister. Don, look at that big smile on my father's face. Yeah, he's sure thrilled. He certainly is. I don't see him. Which one is your dad? The one in Jack's blue suit. <laughs> That's him. I wish he wouldn't put on both pair of pants, though. It's warm here. <laughs> Say, Don, you know what I ought to do tonight as long as we're here in Waukegan? What's that, Jack? Well, after all, this is where I started on my musical career, and I think it's no more than right that I play a violin solo. You know. <laughs> you know, my old violin teacher, Charlie Lindsay, is sitting in our audience, and right there in the front row. He just moved to the back row. He did not. <laughs> and now that Charlie is here, I think I ought to play the first number he ever taught me, the glow worm. Oh, my goodness, I'm getting out of here. Charlie, come back here. <laughs> you always was a great kidder, folks. Say, Phil, let me have a violin, will you? Okay. Here you are, Jack. It goes under your chin. I know where it goes. <laughs> well, I better tune this fiddle up. Give me an A, boys, will you? Oh, just when I wanted to show off a little. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, fine. Rochester, how many times do I have to tell you not to interrupt me in the middle of the program? Now, what do you want? Well, boss, I'm tired of being cooped up in this hotel room with Carmichael. Oh, you are, eh? I want to get out in the sun. I'm losing my tan. <laughs> Listen, Rochester. Roger, you'll just have to stay with that polar bear. He's homesick. By the way, is he standing the heat all right? Yeah, but I think you ought to feed him more. All he had for breakfast was three fish, two eggs, and a bottle of milk. Well, my goodness, isn't that enough? I don't think so. I caught him putting marmalade on the bellboy. <laughs> oh, he was just clowning. He was drooling, too. <laughs> Never mind. Now, Rochester, before I forget it, I want you to pack my bags because we're leaving for New York tomorrow. I'm going to see the Louis Galento fight. You won't get shiny pants watching that. <laughs> Oh, so you're still bragging about Joe Lewis, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Rochester. They don't call Galento the Iron Man for nothing. Why, he's got a chin like an anvil. An anvil? Yes. Well, Brother Lewis is going to play the course on it. <laughs> oh, he is. Well, we'll find out. Now, get going, and I'll see you right after the premiere. All right. By the way, boss, how am I in the picture? You're very good, Rochester. You'll be a big hit. Now, go ahead and pack my bag. Okay, boss, I'll put a man on it right away. <laughs> You'll pack him yourself. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Now what? I meant to ask you something. When we start on our vacation, does that mean I'm off salary for 14 weeks? It certainly does. You're just like me, Rochester. When I don't get it, you don't get it. When you get it, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rochester, I don't want to hear another word about it. You'll just have to take care of... Come, Michael! What's the matter? I got to hang up now, boss. Here comes a fat bellboy. <laughs> well, between Rochester and Carmichael, I sure have my hands full. Now, let's see. Where was I? You were just about to play a violin solo, Jack. You traitor. Why'd you tell him? Mary. All right, boys, the glow worm. You know, I haven't had much time to rehearse it, folks, but I hope all my Waukegan friends will remember and recognize it. Well, I just tune up a little here. Hmm? All right, boy, give me an introduction to the glow worm, will you? Come on. <laughs> plink, plink. <laughs> plink, plink. Never get back in this town again. Oh, quiet. <laughs> plink, plink. Plink, plink. You can talk plainer than that, brother. 
fell. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I could have done better if I had my own violin. And now for an encore, I will Hey, play... Jack, you haven't got time to play anything. Your picture goes on just a few minutes. What time is it? Oh, yes, you'll have to excuse me, folks. Come on, gang, let's all hurry out in the audience and see it. Gee, I'm excited. Oh, boy, wait till I get a load of me. You, 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 that's all you think of. Oh, stop arguing. Hurry up or we'll miss the picture. Don't worry, they won't start it without me. Where are we going to sit, Jack? Don, where do you generally sit? Come on, kids, let's go, will you? All right, everybody, let's get going. Well, tonight we're starting out on our summer vacation, and, uh... You know, it makes us want to leave you with a suggestion that's just swell for these hot days to come. It's crisp summer salad, the dish to spruce up the tiredest appetite. You can make it with cool golden lemon jello or tangy sea green lime. And here's what you do. Dissolve one package of a jello in one pint of hot water. Add one tablespoon of vinegar and a dash of salt and chill until slightly thickened. Now, fold in one cup each of diced cucumber, sliced radishes, and sliced young onions. Mold until firm and serve on crisp lettuce. Ah, there's a cool invigorating salad that's bound to make you hungry. Shimmering jello, lemon or lime, with that wonderful extra rich fruit flavor and the fresh summery color. And crisp, fresh vegetables molded firmly inside. So ask your grocer tomorrow for some lemon or lime jello and try this delicious summer salad. This is the last number of the last program in the current jello series. And we'll be back on the air again, the whole gang and myself, next October the 8th. We have just a few minutes before the picture starts. So in the meantime, I'd like to thank my listeners for their fine support during the year, my cast for their splendid cooperation, and I'd also like to thank my authors, Bill Morrow and Ed Beloyne, who worked with me in the preparation of my material. Well, say, Jack, don't forget about our summer show. Oh, yes. Yeah. Starting next Sunday, Jello will bring you The Aldrich Family, which has been a feature on the Kate Smith program during the past season. And if you've been following it, you know that Ezra Stone as Henry Aldrich is America's funniest teenage hero. So be sure to tune in next Sunday night. Oh, Jack, can I have a bag of popcorn to eat during the show? Now, Mary, there'll be no crunching during my picture. <laughs> this is a talkie, not an eaty. Good night, folks. Thanks again, and see you next October. <laughs> The tune rolls of Washington Square is the title tune of the picture of the same name. This program has come to you from...